G'day guys. In today's video, I'm having a look at the emulation performance of the Poco F3. My one is the 6 gig variant of RAM, 128 gig ROM, and it's running a Snapdragon 870. And the controller that I'm using, which I'm not overly 100% happy with, is the GameSir X2. So this particular one, I do have connection issues where it randomly drops out and I got to essentially stuff around for about five minutes to get it going again. But when it does go, it does go fairly well. So at the minute, pretty much Metal Gear Solid 1 runs perfectly. I haven't really had any issues with that at all. I'm going to load up the state. Audio is also pretty good. And as you can see in the top right hand corner, we're pretty darn solid. Metal Gear. So performance with this has been perfectly fine. So far I've played up to essentially Otica Ocelot and it's been perfectly fine. So if I exit out of there as well. Pretty much the two games I've been using for benchmarks have been Tony Hawk Underground 1 and also Need for Speed Underground 2. So Tony Hawk Underground 2 goes fine, Tony Hawk 3 is also fine, no real issues with that. No, I don't have a save for this one, so I won't bother showing you that. But Tony Hawk 3 is perfectly fine. Zelda is a bit hit and miss. Let's have a quick load on Zelda. As you can see, we do have a bit of fluctuation. So I haven't really done too much combat wise in here. It's one Zelda game I haven't played, but I do want to get into. Frame rate, as long as it's not really using the bloom effect, seems to be alright. So during the opening few videos, it does dip down to about 15 FPS. But I would consider this playable. Okay. There's a waterfall section just around here that I'm just trying to get to. I'm not sure if I can. But mostly a fairly solid game. So during an opening FMV in this location here, it is fairly bad frame rate, as you can see right now, mostly hanging around 29 FPS, which if I quit out and also show you, if I go here, I'm going to go graphic settings, using OpenGL, it's currently two times native resolution, so if you do need that little bit of extra performance, you can drop it down to native resolution. And Tony Hawk Underground, I've so far found this to be perfectly playable. Granted, I have remapped the controls so they are reminiscent of the PlayStation controller. But mostly, it's pretty stable. If it does drop down, it usually gets down to around about 40 FPS, which I still find to be reasonably playful, as it only happens in certain locations just like they're reverting down the bottom but compared to the Poco X3 that I was previously using that had a 7 I think it's a 730G or 732G this was not playable in that game and also as well if I quit out I'll just show what resolution this is also running at so that I'm using Vulkan on this one I haven't actually tried it with OpenGL, but I heard better compatibility. Uh, so here I'm running it in native. Full scene anti-aliasing is set to 2. And anastropic filtering is at 4. So, so far very good results with these games. Also, Wind Waker. Actually, I'll start with showing you what the graphic settings are on Wind Waker. So using OpenGL, two times, so 720p, 
off and also one off as well, one times. So we go here, quick load. No, I didn't actually do a save state on this one. Sorry guys. Ah, here we go. So I've played a bit further in Wind Waker than I have in this particular one, but, ah, oh, sorry, I've played Twilight Princess a lot longer than I've played Wind Waker. As you can see, this also seems to be a 30 FPS game. So this one I'd pretty much classify about as playable as, if not more playable than Twilight Princess due to the art style and the lack of bloom effect that seems to be getting used. So overall, I'd classify Wind Waker to be very playable. And lastly, and also my most favorite one to play at the moment, Underground 2. So right now, on the Poco, this was essentially like a 20 FPS game, where right now, it's going very well. Internal resolution, two times. As I said, for added performance, you can just change it down. I do have it on 4 16 by 9. I did try to use the widescreen hack that's available for it through the Dolphin emulator itself, except that did produce some weird issues with items not getting drawn that were typically out of frame of the game. So you'd be driving along and various walls would just start popping up considerably. As you can see, I'll just turn the volume down here. But it's mostly hanging around between about 30 and 50 FPS to produce a very playable game. Essentially I'm if I'd say if it's anything above 30, it's pretty darn playable. And so far this has been very playable. And racking up a little bit of time on this one, which is uh, considering it's Need for Speed Underground 2 in portable form, which is probably a game that quite a few people would like. I almost feel like the Nintendo Switch wouldn't run this game as well as the Poco F3. Yeah. For some weird reason, my button mapping on my left trigger's gone a bit silly. Anyway. Let's go to a race. So loading times, being I never really had a GameCube back in the day, I can't really say if they are better or worse. And the, the device that I used to play Underground, uh, Underground 2 was a PC. So not really a good point of reference. Excuse my poor driving. Always try and utilize your opponents around the corners. Now I do have also, I do also have a duck station installed on here. And so far the emulation that I've played on that has been a little bit of hit and miss. I don't think it's any fault of the actual phone itself, but more a fault of the an issue with the software. But as you can see, this is extremely playable during races. So overall, pretty good 
emulation of the Dream of the GameCube. So I need to try out the Dreamcast next, but GameCube emulation on the Poco F3, I'm happy to say, is pretty darn good. I like my driving just there. So I'd say yeah, if you're wanting to get a Poco X a Poco F3, potentially some form of gamepad, not necessarily the game sir, but a similar switch style of controller. I think you'll have a very good time and be pretty darn happy with the emulation that you get. Here we go, Tony Hawk 3 anyway. And for some weird reason, my mapping is completely out. Oh, no, I haven't remapped it. <laughs> That's what's going on. Still using the stock default mapping of the GameCube. As you can see, maintaining 60 FPS quite easily. And that will do it for today. So I hope this has helped you with finding out a bit more regarding the Poco F3 and using Dolphin for GameCube emulation. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.